Hey guys, Baseplay12 here, or Mitch as you guys know me. Um, you have another video of me going to Sunday morning worship. You guys like this? Um, sometimes I think, who's going to sit there and watch me talk as I drive to worship uh, practice Sunday morning? Uh, but if you enjoy it, let me know in the comment section. Uh, I kind of enjoy it. It's just one of those things where... Uh, it helps me get my mind prepared for Sunday morning. And um, you know what I don't like to do? I don't know if you uh, ever have, have this happen. You know, as you're going through your Sunday morning worship set in your mind, as you're going to worship practice, um, I sometimes will listen to the radio and, uh, you know, listen to the music. And I don't do that anymore because when I... You know, when I get a song stuck in my head that's not a part of the Sunday morning worship, ooh, it's it's devastating. Um, it totally takes me out of the music that I have been practicing, and I don't know if you guys have had the same situation, but I don't listen to the radio anymore um, because it just throws my mind off on a song. Where if I've been practicing a song and then I listen to something else, I'm just, you know, you start to um, think about the rhythm of the song you just heard on the radio and you just forgot about what you were practicing. So I, I make it a point, don't listen to the radio anymore. It's kind of one of the, I think it's um, the Pez. I don't know if you guys know Pez, you know those little candies that come in the toys? Or I'm no, no, it's not the Pez, it's those pencils, those old school pencils. You remember how if your lead got dull, you take it out and you push it into the back and a new one comes out. I'm a pretty firm believer that, you know, the more information you receive, some information gets pushed out. And I don't want that to happen, especially for songs that you're trying to, you know, learn and memorize. So, um, but anyway, today's video is about it's cold right now it's 46 degrees and I know some of you are like 46 man that would be hot for us right now um, it's almost December but in Southern California 46 is pretty cold and so what what that's gonna pose a problem for is if you guys already know we're in a tent um, because our church building hasn't you know it needs to be built so we're Instead of doing the drive-in, we're doing a tent right now. And for, you know, ventilation, we have to keep some of the parts of the tent open. And so, man, it's going to be cold this morning. So today's question to you is to see if you know this answer, and I'll, I'll reveal the answer at the end, is when it gets cold, what should happen to your bass? And, you know, pretty much any stringed instrument does the cold make your bass or you know stringed instrument does it make it go sharp or does it make it go flat and I'll let you know that at the end because here in Southern California we've already experienced the heat of the summer and I've already experienced cold winters you know and when you're indoors too sometimes they'll, they'll crank the AC on and get it really cold so I've already had tons of experiences of being it too cold, too hot, and you just hope that it doesn't stay that way too long where it lets your um, bass or your guitar, you know, go out of tune. So one more time on that question, does the cold make your bass get flat or does it make it go sharp? Um, but today also what I wanna do is share with you a few funny stories of playing bass and worship and feel free to throw down any of your stories if you want to because it's always fun to share stories with fellow musicians but um, here are a few of mine um, I don't know if you've ever had this situation happen before um, but you know we play at the beginning of the worship set and then we come back at the end which a lot of you know worship teams do and so what will happen is they will after you're done with the first set, they'll they'll mute the instruments, you know, like they should. <clears throat> so what happened one time is we played our, our first worship set, 
and you know the pastor comes up to preach and then the sound guy hits mute and you know all the instruments are muted and so when we came back up to play the second you know the the last set um, before, you know for the worship service to end the sound guy did not unmute me so I'm freaking out up there going you know I, I have no sound coming out of my um, out of the system you know where I didn't have my amp I was going through the board and so you know you don't want to go up there you know going hey 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 I don't have any sound coming out it was just one of those you know you try to make little signals to the sound guy like and not, you know he just wasn't watching and so I'm, I'm playing air guitar I'm faking it and you know trying to just get through the song and I'm just like you know I you, as a musician you don't want to draw attention to anything negative or wrong so I'm just like playing like I would normally play knowing nothing's coming out of my bass and so at the very end of the service I held it had an elderly man come up to me and say hey Mitch your bass playing was so good at the end on that last song and it, it was one of those I didn't know what to say and so I just said you know I just said thank you I didn't you know don't want to embarrass anybody and say well that's kind of weird because I wasn't even playing you know you, I just kind of went with it and went oh thank you very much but it was just one of those funny things where um, I'm playing air guitar and somebody is complimenting on how well it sounded when I wasn't even playing so that was that was definitely a, a funny moment where you know I was able to go man you turn something that was not so good into something funny so hey I'll take that anytime and then another time I don't know how many of you guys have multiple services but I remember one time where the worship team and I we played the morning set and like and it, it doesn't have to be multiple services but when you come back at the end um, so what we would normally do is we would play the worship set the pastor spoke for like 40 minutes so we always know okay we got about 40 minutes so we would go back and the worship leader would buy us um, burritos breakfast burritos so we would play the morning set and we we're eating our breakfast burritos and then we would normally just talk talk about how the set went how was your week kind of thing and I remember one morning we had our burritos and we were talking and um, you know we're just sometimes you just let time get away from you and usually you know what normally we would do is we would check our watches we would check the time and make sure hey make sure you're back ready because you know like normal the pastor would pray and that's when we would go up there to play the last song so it was just funny we're sitting around sorry about that guys my phone fell off my stand there so let me uh, finish the story we're sitting around the table and somebody rushes into the room where we were eating and said hey guys we're ready for your last song. The whole congregation's just standing up waiting. And so we're just, you know, we're like firefighters going to a fire. We're like, what? So we all rush into the, you know, worship center service, you know, sanctuary. And it was so embarrassing. Everybody's staring at us. We're walking through. I felt like I was, uh, you know, the bride on her wedding day walking down the aisle everybody's standing up uh, we're walking through the you know up the middle of the aisle and you know everybody's kind of snickering like where, where were you guys kind of thing so it was one of those oh man and we talked about it for years after it was just one of those funny moments like hey remember when we forgot to you know watch our time and go back up and everybody was staring at us laughing and I don't know if you've ever had a situation like that where you, you were a little bit late. Sorry guys, I don't know why my phone keeps falling. I'm going to have to readjust the stand. But it was one of those things where, you know, 
it, you just, it was traumatic. Like the next three months after that, we were just like super early because we didn't want that to happen. And yeah, the pastor gave us a little thing about, hey, make sure you're watching your time. And we understood, but one of those crazy stories. Okay, guys, so the answer to what does the cold do to your base? When the air temperature gets cold, it should make the wood of your, your guitar contract. And what it's gonna do is then it's gonna start to get your bass to get flat. It should make your bass, you know, if you're trying to tune it, it should make it go very flat. So I remember when it was when it was hot, it would make the guitar, it would make it go sharp because the wood is going to then expand and it's gonna tighten up their strings and it's gonna just make everything get super um, sharp. So today's question, sorry about the phone falling, guys. Um, but the today's answer is the cold should make your bass go very flat. So it's just one of those things where you have to make sure, you know, I, I keep my bass out of the sun. I keep it out of anywhere where it's going to get super drafty and cold. Um, it's just one of those things where you're trying to get temperature control on your bass. So... All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that, the, the funny stories. I'd love to hear your funny stories and, um, you know, be able to just be careful about where you put your base and making sure it's uh, not too cold and not too warm. Okay, guys, I'm here for Sunday morning worship. Hope and pray to God everything goes well, and I will see you in my next video.